So happy to be here. As I was introduced, I'm Dr. James Bruce, and I'm a local resident. I live in a building just across the parking lot. And I'm a published author, I'm an international singer, songwriter, I'm an educator, I mean, it's an international person. I travel to more than 70, 70 countries, and wherever I go, I like to make an, uh, an impression. The impression I want to make is that I want to learn from other people. I want to learn from other cultures. I present myself with an open heart, an open mind, and that I'm not better or worse than anyone else, but I'm just uh, full of love, and I have a love heart, and I want to uh, appreciate that. I'm, as an educator, I'm a strong believer in, in understanding the power of words. I'm a uh, Christian, I'm a believer, and I also, in that context, I also know the, uh, the, the real power of word, of the word. And in the of the Bible, it was the word that said God is God is the word. He said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And God spoke and said, let there be light. Those are words that are powerful. In our everyday conversation, words have power, they have life, they can bring down, they can build up, and they can uh, embrace or they can release or destroy. And I just thought about the power of that. And as a, a um, local author and uh, published author and writer, I'm actually very excited to um, announce that uh, two weeks ago, I released my book number 56. 56, thank you, thank you. And uh, the books, uh, I had read children's books, books about life, some spiritual books, books about art, and books about um, everyday stuff. And, and I began, uh, a few months ago, I began thinking, I said, hmm, words are very powerful. And what does that mean? We are motivated or we're moved by words. And I think as we go on, we can uh, center our minds and our hearts on words, and words can move us forward. So I thought, what better way to inspire someone with words? And so I thought, I said, I'll write a book, and I'll call it The Word for Today. This is the book that came out. The Word for Today is... And what we have here is a book that has 365 days, and the days are numbered. Not with dates, but numbered. So a uh, person who's using the book as a journal, they, whenever they start, that becomes the number of the day. So for example, day number 61, the word for today is power. And then it follows, says, how will you apply the word today? I will and you fill in the blanks for what that is. So this book serves as a great journal, so you can always reflect back on how you thought about that day in terms of a word. And, and I know that sometimes we meet and greet each other in the morning. And so I say, well, okay, and guess what? The word for today is power. And that might stimulate her thinking or motivate her. I say, and guess what? The word for uh, day 208 is Heart. So, Ann, how will you use that word heart? Well, I'm going to speak from my heart. I'm going to feel my heart, and so forth. And so I'm very excited uh, about that book as a um, journal. So the book is filled with not just words, but very powerful words. As you see on the covers, it meditate, hope, and consideration, relax, gratitude, uh, love, mentor. So, as a uh, teacher, I like to motivate and engage and communicate, connect with people. So, if, and I like your participation as well. So, if you don't mind, I know you have a video, but if you don't mind, uh, I can go around to the table to make it interactive. And I'll put out a word, and uh, you can volunteer uh, to tell us how you'd like to use that word. You like that idea? It's okay? So I'm going to the word hope. How will you use this word hope? You say, I will. Well, I would say hope springs eternal. Wow, that's powerful. Hope springs eternal. On a spring. Would someone from this table like to offer a word, offer a relax? The word relax.
Okay. I would like to relax doing my favorite hobbies. Wow. I would like to relax doing my favorite hobbies. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and that alone, he's like speaking to himself. He's creating an atmosphere, a space, just using that word relax. And it creates some mindfulness around that, uh, the word. And a mindfulness about where he's at in that moment. Okay? How about this table? The word, let's say gratitude. Gratitude. For everything. Yeah, there are many things that I'm grateful for. Wow. And that's it. Again, once again, that's chiming into the, into the atmosphere. This sense of, uh, from the heart, to be grateful and to appreciate gratitude because that goes a long way. Because if I'm, grat if I'm grateful about something, then the, uh, that thing or that person or that experience receives that energy of being appreciated, right? And how about on this table? Faith. The word faith. Would someone like from this table say, um, use the word faith. How will you use that word today? Faith, hope, and charity. There we go. Faith, hope, and charity. And see, sometimes these words can also invite or stimulate other thoughts, things that you know, and create as a, use that, serve as a connector. Right? Faith, hope, and charity. And according to the Bible, those three things are one, right? Those are great. And this other table in the back, how about the word mm, determination? Determination. I am determined I will be Henry Peter and privilege. <laughs> <laughs> and she has a, a determination to do something. And so within that word determination, there's has to be patience, has to be focus, has to be commitment, has to be uh, humility, has to be uh, purpose. Uh, so, so again, that, that's the power of words. And we can use that to be creative about um, what we did. How about Pastor Laugh? Laugh? Laugh. We've got two pastors. Laugh. The word laugh. We love to laugh. We love to laugh. We love to laugh. And uh, medical science or those who say laughter is good. Even the Bible says laughter is good. It's good for the soul. So there's a time to laugh and there's a time to cry. And so even when we're crying, that then allows us to go through that experience and then later appreciate when we're able to laugh. Right? And um, I think this is the last table. How about the word mm, peacemaker? Peacemaker. We pray for that right now, that there will be a peacemaker that will come quickly and help all that's going on. Yes, and, and um, since we're in the church, who is the king of, who is the prince of peace? Jesus Christ. He's the peacemaker. He says, I've come to bring you peace, you know, and love. So this is um, the essence of this book. It talks about a lot of different words and how we use them. And it can even be uh, very good to begin a dialogue. So when you're meeting with your, your family, your friends, and your just conversation, you can say, well, the word for today is, and you can go back and forth and share and, uh, and go back and you know, understand that, that word. Uh, so the word for today is and has many different words. Um, then I'm also a published author of, as I said, 56 books. One of my books is actually my bestseller. It's a book writing guide. It says, so you want to write a book? Find out how. And so back in 2015, I um, had this spirit where I wanted to encourage many people to write a book. Because I believe that we all have a story we all have a story to share. So in the book, in my introduction, I commend and I applaud and I cheer and I rally, uh, rally for all the people who have gone that next step and opened their heart and their mind to share their life stories. 
Because this, we're here to help each other, right? When, and when we share our experiences, um, you can serve as a lesson, as a guide, as a prevention, as consolation for someone who may have gone through or will go through some of what you did. And at the same time, I shame or damn or didn't feel so happy about the many people who have lived these productive lives and figured their way out and through, navigated through life and taking all of that life experience here to the grave. So it's because of them that people who are behind, they suffer. People die because they took the secrets. They took the, this is how you do it with them. So I encourage people to write the stories, share their stories. And everyone has, everyone we, I say is a walking book. Because there are millions of people out in the world who's looking to hear your story. They don't know what it is until you share it. But a word, even just a word, you can offer them. A word of gratitude, a word of kindness, a word of encouragement that that can keep them on and carry them through the next day. So this book is a writing guide. So if people are interested in writing the book, this particular model, if you follow this model, you can write a book within 60 days. It's followed because it's, 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 it's you compiled. And they ask the very first question is, why? Why do you want to write a book? And I believe that the answer to the why creates the motivation. It sets the stage. Because some people write it, they want to become rich and famous. Some want to set the record straight, tell their side of the story, shame this person, uplift this person, or brag about themselves. So my opinion, that sharing a story should be to encourage, to inspire, to motivate, to enlighten, to educate people based on your story. And I feel that if it's done based on that um, ideal or that purpose to help someone else, it will be the truth. It will be the truth. And so I encourage people to consider sharing their, um, their thing. So one last book I want to share. Um, this is called Rebuilding Your Temple with Self-Esteem from the Inside Out. Rebuilding Your Temple with Self-Esteem from the Inside Out. And I began writing this book in 2011. And I began thinking about um, how the world is like going upside down. Things just going wild. And we look at our relationships. And people are changing their attitudes, their mindset, their mentality, their, their spirit. Everything is just changing. And many times because they're impacted by so much around them. And so... The metaphor I use in this book is that if you look across the street at your neighbor's house, and the house is leaning a little bit, you might be tempted not to notice say, Mrs. Jones, from my window, it looks like your house is leaning. It might fall. She said, what are you talking about? My house is fine. No, come see. And she'll go outside and she'll look from your angle. Sure enough, the house is leaning. So Mrs. Jones would get on the phone and call the contractor in. And the contractor, she would start ripping off the siding and the insulation, the plywood, all the way down to the bare studs. And she would say, well, this stud is cracked. This one is dry rotted. This one is uh, torched from a fire 50 years ago. This one is fine. And so that contractor, she will begin uh, repairing. So there's three parts. She'll repair, restore, and if it's so bad, she'll replace it. And once all those are brought back to the standard, the house goes up, and it's that. So I use that as a metaphor to people. So sometimes you might see someone, and you know they're always happy, ready to go, hang out, and have a good time. And suddenly they're acting a little funny. They say, no, I'm, I'm, I just want to be by myself. You're like, what's going on? So the, question, the, the issue is, the matter is, Something's going on in that person, within that person. It might be the loss of a loved one. It might be the, the diet they suddenly change. It might be their fear that something's coming. It might be their dealing with stress of another matter. 
So he began looking inside of all those different pieces, aspects that may impact how people feel about themselves. And that's essentially what self-esteem is. How do you feel about yourself? How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself through the eyes of someone else? How do you see someone else perceiving how they see you? Right? So all these things. So when you begin analyzing each of these aspects, and you repair, restore, or rebuild, then when they brought up to be rebuilt or replaced, then you live it. So that a person is up and saying, that's the person I know. Always happy, always positive, and then we do that. So that is offered in this book. So I think I've talked enough. I want to open this up. Uh, any questions you have about me, about my writing, if you're interested in writing, I'm available just across the street. I'd love to hear your stories um, to be able to encourage others uh, by writing and sharing your story. Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes. Um, <laughs> So, um, I am not a, I do write, obviously. I write a sermon every week, um, or edit it, or something like that, that Carol Casey loves to hear preach. <laughs> <laughs> I anyway, I do write, obviously, that's my point. But I'm curious, um, when did you start journaling, and, or shall we say, talking about your story? Okay. Do you have a time in your life? I have one in mind. Yes. I have, I've been writing, just, I'm, I'm, God's blessed me, a couple of weeks ago I just turned 63, 63, but I've been writing since I was actually 12 years old, that was actually my first job as a writer, it was a summer job, and I loved writing, and it was writing, in fact I wrote about, I was walking down the street, and I, I looked down, there was a little photo book of pictures of a fire station that was being built in Roxbury on Dudley Street. It's very interesting. I guess a contractor there took pictures of the construction, digging the hole. And I said, wow, that's interesting. So I did my research. At 12 years old, I had a summer job. I began writing, and I offered my, and entered my story about the soon coming fire station in Roxbury. And that was published in a local newspaper. <laughs> and, yes. and I'm curious about other people's stories about writing, because it's something I want to take on um, vocationally when I retire, whatever that happens. Uh, but my own personal story about that is that when I was about 10 years old, 10 or less, my grandmother gave all of her grandchildren diaries for Christmas. Mm. And that's when I started diary journal writing was you know, uh, probably in 1972 or something like that. And I would use little Jeff came home, or Jeff coming home, or something like that. 
And so it's very big, and in her own handwriting. And I'm, and I'm, uh, I'm in an online course right now, a spirituality course, where we have to do um, reflections. And one of the requirements of the reflections is that we have to handwrite them. Wow. We cannot do it on a computer. Because we then do submit it later online, but we have to first write it by hand. Yeah. And that is a very different process than just sending a text. So I'm glad to see a lot of you write in the Bruce City. I have journals upstairs. If anybody wants a journal, I will give you a journal today to start journaling because it will change your life. That is that's a wonderful point, Pastor. Yes. I've been writing a book about my life right now. Okay. I was forced. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So in anticipation and projection that it will be done, I applaud you. I applaud you. Because it will be your story, your part of you that will live on. That becomes the um, legacy, your words. And it, it is the word that will continue. So we are our words, right? And uh, the pastor, you just you mentioned something about even just little, making little notes. The dentist, so we can sort of pull from that a lot. One that if, if his mom is at dentist appointments day, what does that mean? She took care of herself. So in part of that, she had to prepare herself physically, prepare her mind <laughs> for that. So in that, that could even uh, present or provide. Like a, uh, some instruction. Look, son, I took care of myself. Take care of yourself. Or whatever, whatever the message was. So I, I encourage all that because we all have a lot of stories. And what's so powerful is that when we're able to write about it in that moment. In that moment. And what's nice is that maybe uh, a year later, two years, you can go back and reflect on that moment. That will bring you back up to speed based on your emotions, based on your feelings, your understanding. So maybe a year later you say, well, I wrote that, but actually, I shouldn't have been so mad about that. Because it, that was silly. So, and then it allows you to say, yeah, I've matured. I've grown. Yeah. Are there any other questions or comments? Yes. Who publishes your books? Yeah, that's a good, good question. Uh, most of my books are published by Amazon. And Amazon is perhaps one of the leading book distributors. There's, um, all of my books are on Amazon, and I have a uh, website, I don't know if uh, you're on into the websites, but it's very easy to uh, remember, it's a dedicated website. www, we say triple w dot, James Bruce, that's my name, books, these books, dot com. Do you have a card? I have a card, I'll give you two. Thank you so much. And so, um, goes, I'm a singer, so, Triple W dot James Bruce Books dot com. <laughs> Triple W dot James Bruce Books dot com. I, I just want you to mention the project you're working on. You received a grant. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. and thank that's you. a good way to end. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Ann. Um, I'm very excited, and I, 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 I we just have to love Ann, do we? And, and, and I love Anne in a special way because Anne is like, really, she's committed. Her heart is really in the community. She's genuine. Anne is just so pure in her support, in her commitment, and her supporting people moving forward. So last year, Anne told me, she says, there's a grant coming out through the Cultural Arts Council. She says, you better apply for a grant. And so I followed her lead and did what I was supposed to do. And I, and I uh, um, offered a proposal to do a book writing, to write a book about Brockton. And it, it's called, it's, and I have the title everything, I have everything ready to go. It's called Brocktonian Voices. Brocktonian Voices. So the book is designed to serve as a 
a guide as a um, representation of Brockton. And it's going to be a, a variety of mix of voices from Brockton, people who consider themselves Brocktonians. They're from different backgrounds, different ages, different professions. And then some of the, a few questions like, what do you know about Brockton? What was your perception about Brockton before you got here? What is your involvement in Brockton? What do you see as the perfect you know, Brockton? And so far, I want to get that input, input so it's available to people who want to know about Brockton from Brocktonians. People don't have a special agenda. People are not trying to make it all that is, is or is not. And so I'm very happy for that. So I'm just waiting for the council to get back to me. Let me know when I can move forward and make that happen. So um, when it comes grant? out, I'm yeah. sorry? You got the grant? I got the grant. Good. Yes, yeah, I got it. Thank you so, so much. So we can yes. start any time now. I can start. It's due December 31st. Yeah. Okay, cool. great. Yes. Uh -huh. So I'm and very, very happy with that. Mm -hmm. The same cultural council grants the church the grants that we use for our concert series. Oh, yeah. 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 So it is, they've always been enormously generous, so we're very blessed. Howard, you have a question? Okay. I thought you had. Anybody else? Um, you're more than welcome to meet Dr. Bruce afterwards. Um, and um, what a wonderful, I think for an, a kind of an intimate conversation too, it's usually not an intimate conversation. Sure. Um, you know, so we appreciate that deeply. And you've touched upon something that's really powerful, is the written word. And even if it's just our story or, you know, something that was private in our lives, you know, or versus something that's very public. So, um, you've certainly given me things to think about. I found my joke. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody thinks Cleopatra is beautiful. Not everybody thinks Cleopatra is beautiful. But that's how Julius Caesar. <laughs> Um, let's give Dr. Bruce a big hand, and please come see him, look at his books, everything.